So exciting news, we finally passed the final certification of the electronics of the race. We can now begin manufacturing the PCBs of the race. Right now, Matt is in China working in the factories and he's making sure that everything is working properly. The next clip is a video that Matt sent us of him doing the quality control checks of the LEDs. So we've got the, um, the LEDs. This is just um, two of ten bags uh, that I took two from PCBA. Um, and they said don't open them until the latest moment that you can. But we're going to be assembling tomorrow the first hundred from the NP. Um, and I need to validate these. So you might remember that I made this um, test jig and we have a little test board here and then we check the wavelength of the LEDs that it's all still what we expect because we don't want to assemble those if boards with the wrong flavour LEDs, the wrong light output. So um, I need to open these bags, solder on some samples onto here, close the bags really quickly to stop them from getting too humid. And to help me, I've got my friend Hartz here. here. So he's going to take these um, boards, solder on the LEDs, and then bring them back here and we'll check to see that they're still good. Our LED supplier, last time we got, when we uh, accepted the samples with this little test jig that can measure the frequency and amplitude of the light of the three, and basically for us, we need to have the red, the green, and the blue all to be above this 2000 mark. So, Jose has soldered on the new uh, samples onto the little tester boards. So, now we run the test. Yes, oh, so we've got all above 2,000 for that, and then we swap out for the number 13 sample. So we've had 14 different samples of LED over the years. <laughs> Crazy. Crazy. Mount. And the reverse mounts, some, for some reason, they uh, often give us a little bit more light um, than the uh, front mount. But these look very, very similar. Yeah, everything's over 2000, so we're good to go for the 100 first of the NP tomorrow. Everything's ready, we hope. PCBs are ready, so tomorrow we'll be uh, soldering on thousands of these LEDs with the help of some handy robots. So, fingers crossed. In the next clip, Matt gives us a tour inside the PCBA factory, where he explains to us how the 100 PCBs are assembled with all the different components. So, the circuit boards start off in this hopper at the beginning, and uh, they're all racked up in there. And then a little arm comes and pushes them out into the stencil machine which is way cleverer than I uh, originally noticed. When I saw the guy setting it up, they use the little markers on the board to make sure the board is exactly in the right place for the stencil. And then the uh, solder paste is squished through. The stencil is 0.12 millimeters, very thin. It's like a silk screen, but made of steel. And then we go into this first pick and place machine, which I've not actually seen one quite like this before. Normally the heads move around and the board stays still, but this one, the board is moving and the heads are rotating around, so it places the components extremely fast. Um, the camera quality is not great, I apologise for that, but here you can see all the LEDs going down. Look how fast they go down. And then the, here we come with the, um, the rest of the, oh, those are the key LEDs, and then here come the sockets. So this is placing all the components at where the um, positioning isn't completely critical. Um, so there's maybe a hundred components that so that's just placed. And then we move on to the second uh, PCBA machine, the second pick and place machine, which is a slower but more accurate machine. And it places the um, two microchips, the LED driver and the controller, uh, an ESD microchip, the two connectors, um, and there's a little ferrite choke in there as well. 
So you can see there's hardly any reels set up there. Uh, that's where the components are dispensed from. And then we go into a cool little um, uh, PCB handler that rotates the board round and then on into the next step. So one thing that I learned from watching this process is that, at least for the first few hundred boards, there's a lot of fine-tuning of the machines as the line is running. So while that's going on, there's someone always checking the boards and talking to the engineer about little problems they're finding. So one problem has been that the USB-C connector is not always fully pushed down, and we've seen a little bit of a problem with these FPC connectors as well. So the person here is just making some fine details, they pass that information on to the engineering charge of their pick and place machines and they're making little tweaks and variations of things as the line is running. Then that goes into this uh, long oven that maintains a special temperature profile that first heats the board up gently. You can just see on that screen the bar graphs of all the different zones in the machine. Imagine it's like a whole bunch of ovens stacked together each with a different temperature. and. Uh, kind of close to the end, we ramp up the temperature enough to melt the solder. And then you can see the PCB coming out for a final quick um, manual check. And what's missing at the moment is the PCB going into the AOI machine, the automatic optical inspection. So at the moment they're setting that machine up. Now that we have the final golden samples, they train this machine to know if any component is being put in or slipped or is missing. Um, it can apparently even tell if one of the Kiowa sockets is slightly lifted, so that stuff can be spotted before it goes into the test jigs. So that's it. Hope you enjoy the little update uh, from China, and I'll be heading back to Spain in a few days. Catch you later.